Good morning. It's Steve from Southern Illinois again. And this is an absolutely beautiful day. Sky is blue without a single cloud. And we got up to 53 degrees today. And uh, my wife is wearing one of her cuddly sweaters. It's an absolutely wonderful time of the year. This is also the time of the year when uh, Steve uh, <clears throat> has to take on a task. You see, um, over the summer I accumulate a stack of wood and I have to feed the fireplace in our home. Uh, it actually cuts our fuel bills by about 30% but I need a place to store my wood. So earlier this summer, I talked to you about how I was uh, tearing down a shed and uh, salvaging the wood. We talked about that when we were talking about the weight of the cross. Well, the time has come to put the wood together and make the wood shed. And so uh, about six weeks ago, I started uh, this project and along the course of it, I've learned quite a few things. First of all, uh, foundations. The ground where I wanted to put my wood shed was anything but even. Uh, there were low spots and high spots, and as I started uh, leveling out some of the low spots, uh, I discovered that there was a uh, this glob of concrete that had just been dumped in what looked like a hole in the ground. It was about a foot and a half think, uh, foot and a half feet thick, and um, my sledgehammer wouldn't even make a dent in it. So I incorporated that into the foundation, which kind of set my uh, my uh, limits there. There were a few cinder blocks around the area that uh, had accumulated over the years, so. They went into the foundation. And uh, then there was this uh, platform that had used to be the anchor for a TV antenna. So th that served as one corner. <clears throat> I spent six weeks leveling and re-leveling, soaking the, the soil to uh, try to let water help along and uh, bringing in soil from down in the creek bed and tamping it down with a a four by a, a yeah a four by four to try to compact the soil i worked hard at getting an even foundation well you saw the results an even foundation i have not but earlier this week i decided enough was enough now, <clears throat> you may laugh, but I actually leveled the entire foundation and made sure everything was right where it was supposed to be. And I thought I had a solid foundation, but that really wasn't what pushed me forward. What pushed me forward was, yeah, <laughs> the pile of wood. This wood has to be split before the fall rains come. I need to keep it dry so that it'll burn well. <clears throat> so I moved on this week to putting up the rest of the building. And uh, you've seen enough of my handiwork, okay, such as it is. I learned a few things along the way. I learned that a solid foundation is important. Um, and I learned how hard it is to build a solid foundation. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> I learned something that was quite humbling. Steve's got no skills. Now, my dad was something of a wonder kind when it came to construction. Okay, He worked his way through college, worked summers as a framer, framer uh, during the housing boom in Sacramento, California in the late 50s, early 60s. He came in just as a high school graduate, but within a week, uh, the foreman had recognized his skills and he was in, tar in charge of a framing crew 
all of whom were older than him. My dad had skills. When he swung a hammer, the hammer always hit the nail. When he cut a board, it followed the line true. And he could organize a crew, okay? Before, before the day started, he had all the lumber for the morning's work laid out. Uh, he could read the blueprints. Uh, as the men were working, he was measuring and remeasuring to make sure that they had everything true. When lunch came, while the men were working, he was out there laying out the lumber for the afternoon's work. And um, when the evening came and the men took off, uh, he made sure that the workplace was picked up, that there were no extra scraps of lumber left laying around to turn an ankle or trip over. All the men on his crew were older than him but none of them resented his leadership because they made their bonus, their productivity bonus every day. And his attention to safety meant that injuries were non-existence for his crew. My dad had skills and every time a new man came onto his crew, uh, he was teaching them, giving them tips on how to swing their hammer, how to, how to cut a board, uh, how to, to uh, prevent a wall from racking, and how to true up a, a line. My dad tried to teach me. I can still remember some of his tips today. I used them this week. But when I swing a hammer, the board takes as much of a beating as the nail does. And when I cut a board, the saw wanders from one side of the line to the other like a drunken sailor in a congan line. Okay, I got no skills. Because in the last few decades, the only time that I've picked up my hammer was to slap together a few bar boards uh, to make what I call the playhouse for my son or to uh, tighten up a few nails that were popping up through uh, a floorboard. I didn't use my skills. As a consequence, I got none. But this week, I've grown. I'm very thankful I'm only building a woodshed and not a house. But uh, at the end of the week, I can tell you that the nails are receiving much more attention than the wood. And uh, my cuts on, my, on the wood are much more accurate. I've learned a lot. Uh, for example, let me, let me show you here, okay? One of the th things I learned, you may have known this already, but nails are classified according to a system called pennies. Now, that always struck me as weird, okay? Why would you measure a nail in pennies? Well, it turns out that in the 1500s, when this classification system was started, a hundred nails uh, w cost a certain number of pennies. So a 20 penny nail, a hundred nails of, a 20 pen of 20 pennies cost 20 pennies. Now the symbol for pennies that's used in construction is, the, is, the, is a D, a lowercase d. And that always struck me as weird. Why would you use a lowercase d as a symbol for pennies? Why not a P? Our, our um, construction people vertically dyslexic and they flip their D's and their P's? Well, it turns out that the D arises from the Latin denarius, which was the, the word the Romans used for a penny which only Christians that read the King James Version are even aware of today. <clears throat> so, 
that's just a little bit of trivia that connects things for me. Okay. Another thing I learned about nails, you know, we, we use the, the frame, got to nail it down. And I always thought that nails were designed to hold things down, to keep them from blowing away. One thing I learned this week is that while a nail does hold things down in uh, materials science terminology, that's called its pulling power. The, the power that's needed to pull a nail up and out of the wood. But a framing nail, like, like what I've been using, to pull it out of the wood, it takes an average of 40 pounds of pressure to pull it out of the wood. Now that also means it takes an average of 40 pounds of pressure to pull the wood apart that you've nailed together. However, to make the wood shift from side to side, it requires 198 pounds to make the wood shift from side to side, which is called the shear strength of the nail. A nail is three and a half times better at preventing things from wiggling around as it is from, from holding them together. Now, that's the opposite of a screw. A screw has tremendous holding power. It holds things down. But it's also very brittle. And its shear strength is about, only about half of what its holding power is. So maybe we should change the idiom in English, and instead of saying, you got to nail it down, we should say, you got to screw it down. Uh, somehow, I don't think that's going to, to uh, catch on. So why are we talking about this today? Spiritual people do the things that they do because they reflect the ideals that they're invested in, that they believe in. Religious people do the things that they do because they know what right and wrong are. Both perspectives are powerful. But together, they're unbeatable. So what foundation are you building? Are you maintaining your skills? Are you putting the knowledge that you have into practice? Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, look up. I'll touch bases with you next week. Have a good week.